Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to a and &E today. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who it's going to be. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. Code red, helipad response. You're having a heart attack. We want to be in and out of scan in the next 10 minutes. I can't feel any pulse. Reception, can I help you? Yeah, 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of the busiest and most advanced A&E departments in the world. Beautiful. It's as if we've done it before. We are there when awful things happen to pick up the pieces. We have a two-year-old who's kicked by the horse. We see the unpredictableness of what happens in life, and we're suddenly having to explain why it's gone wrong. I can't feel my left leg. You'll be OK. A place where life... Amy, Sophie! Don't be loud. Too slow. <laughs> Love. Such a big boy. I'm so proud of you. And loss. I'm still here. Unfold every single day. So we don't shake hands at this hospital. We fist bump. Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Hello, darling. You genuinely do see the best of people in this job. You'll see strangers rushing to the aid of someone they've never met. You just see things that make you realise just how important the people in your life are and the people around you are. Don't sound at all worried about that. No. You, sound quite you speak way too much now, so there's <laughs> no like it would be nice. <laughs> One hundred ambulances can arrive at St George's emergency department every twenty-four hours. Consultant Will is in charge of resus today. Yeah, that, that was it. I was just gonna pick the brain. Hello, uh, Amy. When I was a little boy, what the dream of being? Uh, I could make up my mind. Astronaut, fighter pilot, <laughs> superhero. Same as all little boys, I think. No obvious long bones. Well, he's got long bones, but no obvious fractures. <laughs> I was really interested in dinosaurs when I was little, and then uh, realised there weren't any more of those around. Um, but I got really interested in biology. I thought it was fascinating. I, living things work. You've basically got cells that can no longer utilise oxygen. So what will happen to your heart? We'll just we have stop. Been no. <laughs> eventually, yeah, but that's, that's again something that happens to us all eventually. <laughs> I'll go away and read about something for work and then I'll just find myself shooting off on a tangent, just trying to learn <laughs> the most obscure random bits of information just because they interest me. The only nation state that had uh, paper compensation to do dissection was Venice. I'd definitely describe myself as geek without the chic. Five-year-old man is being rushed to St George's Hospital with a dangerously high heart rate. Yeah. Yeah. When you're waiting for that patient to arrive, you've got a lot of things rushing around in your your head. Yeah. Ten minutes. Bye. You draw up a little mental checklist of problems, and then of course you've got to figure out how to fix it. 
being brought in from his home in Wimbledon, a few miles away. Can we take that one into one? Man's wife, Julie, has accompanied him in the ambulance. Joey wasn't feeling very well that week. But he kept saying that he was all right. On the Friday, I went to work in the morning. I got home about quarter to six in the evening. I said to him, my God, Jerry, it's so hot in here. He said, I'm frozen. He said, I feel so cold. And I was thinking, I've got to do something. So I rang 999. They loaded us all in the ambulance, and when they listened to the heart rate, it was through the sky. And I thought, my God, this is bad. This is, this is really bad. It's been seven minutes since Jerry left home, and his condition deteriorated further in the ambulance. Um, basically, since last Saturday, he's been feeling unwell, short term breath. He's got AF. AF, in really simple terms, is when your heart starts to beat quite quickly and irregularly. If your heart is beating really, really, really quickly, it can lead you to have a, a cardiac arrest. Do you want to pop the pants on? Can I just check your pulse on your wrist, sir? And, uh, oh, you've got a second hand on your watch, that's handy. Can you tell me when you're ready to go with that? Now that... <laughs> that will explain why he looks rotten. A heart rate of 200, 250 is a genuine medical emergency. That's an unsustainable rate for your heart to beat at. With his heart rate peaking at 262 beats per minute, consultant Will urgently needs to give Jerry an antiarrhythmic drug in an attempt to return his heart to its normal rhythm. If it slows you down enough, then we can see exactly what the problem is. So if you're ready, we'll go ahead and do that right now. So it will feel a bit funny. This nice slow breath, see if it does anything at all. Boom. Oh, it nearly worked. Slow dry down and then it went uh, nuts again. Doctors must now deliver an urgent electric shock to Jerry's heart to stop it beating so fast and prevent him from going into cardiac arrest. We're going to electrocute him. Twenty minutes ago, 75-year-old Jerry was brought into A&E with an extremely high heart rate. Doctors have been unable to slow it down using drugs. Now their only option is to try and return his heart back to a normal rhythm with an electric shock. Jerry's wife, Julie, travelled with him in the ambulance. We've been married 15 years now. I had been working at a construction company and Jerry was working there as well. And I knew Jerry, you know, because um, obviously you, you just see people every day in your working life. So pads on, but monitoring through the leads. So we need to put the three leads on from there. 
He used to come down to our office, I worked with my friend Anne, and, you know, it was everybody used to just be very, very friendly there. Right, we're going to get on, give you some sleepy stuff. Go on and do this. Is it all right if I take your glasses away just now? Yes, of course. They were having this quiz at a pub and it was for the company, you know, everybody who worked there. They had to get teams together. Anne at that time was single as well, so she said Jerry wants to go so we could make a team. We were having such a good time that Jerry got hold of my hand. But it was sort of like to do with the competition because, you know, we're doing well, we're doing well. I must admit, Jerry holding my hand, it was such a lovely feeling. It was like a warmth. When you're on your own, nobody ever cuddles you or you've never got anybody to put your arms round because you're totally on your own, so you don't have any of that physical contact with anybody. You just, you just don't. And then for somebody to hold your hand, it's a lovely feeling. Check patient. You feeling sleepy at all, sir? This is really got to be quick here. If you're going to provide somebody with electricity in that sort of situation, there's a danger if you do it incorrectly, you can make things worse. So the sink on. If you trip the heart into it, the worst rhythm, the main pumping chambers of your heart won't beat in any sort of coordinated fashion, and that is not compatible with life. OK, so charge in. Okay, we shot coming up, sir. Oh. And we're fixed. All done, oh, sir. Oh, All finished. Right. All done. Okay? Your heart's going back to normal now, okay? Still feeling quite sleepy. Okay. We still haven't got past the other issue, which is that he's got underlying chest sepsis. Yeah. So we're not better yet. We're just going to check your blood pressure one more time now. This is going to get a bit tight. We need to figure out why your heart did this and see if there's something that we need to treat, yeah. possibly an infection. Good. I'll uh, go and have a quick chat to his wife. Can you lift it up and down and bend it at the knee? Yay! Give me your croissant. Your croissant is what I want. Thank you. Uh, bitch. I wish I'd put makeup on. You look pretty without it. Pretty ugly. No. Never gonna bag me a doctor <laughs> looking like this when I come in, I know. Actually, this is. This is quite nice, isn't it? not there? bad, is it? Well, it's not, you know, how you imagine A&E. 92-year-old Margaret has come into A&E with her friend Yvette after falling over and hitting her head. Let have a look. Nasty, nasty is lump, it? yes. I joined a class, a day class, on Italian art, and I ended up in the front row sitting next to Margaret. It does hurt when you touch it. I don't touch it. No. We hit it off immediately. Crack, I heard it. Oh, horrible. We go out to lunch. We go to uh, exhibitions sometimes. I'm a mage. You must have a really tough skull. I'm a tough old nut. A tough old bird. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a birthday on the same day it might have had something to do with it. Exactly the same day, just a few decades apart. Margaret. Oh, well, there you go. Hello there. 
I was an only child, so friendship has been very important to me all my life. My name's Tom, one of the doctors here. Come on through. Right, thank you. I'll just go around here. And it's lovely having somebody younger, too. It's what I need. Can we put on that bed? Is that OK? Are you all right? Like, can you get up? What's the advantages of having a younger friend? Well, she's not going to die before me. So, walk me through what happened last night. Well, I went to put the thing for the milk out on the step. Yep. And I must have turned and either the mat tripped me or my shoe stuck on the uh, tiles. OK. And I went flat on my back. OK. And how often do you fall? Never. You never fall? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. well, don't take offence. She doesn't make a habit of <laughs> it. Margaret is hugely independent. She lives alone. She goes out. She does all her own shopping. Oh, she's hugely independent. And how much alcohol do you drink? One a day. One of a bottle or a glass? Oh, no. <laughs> a drink. A gin and tonic or a glass of wine. Occasionally, sometimes two. If you act old, Oh, I can't do that, dear. You know, my knee won't let me. Then, of course, people are going to react to you differently. But if, you, if you're just you, then people take you as you present yourself. Can you put your arms in the air like that for me? Super. Keep them there and close your eyes. What am I supposed to be doing? You keep them there. That's all. Can you just stand up for me? You haven't even looked at my head yet. No, no, no. <laughs> well, we'll do a full MOT for you. He knows what he's doing. Sure. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> I can see where you've done it. You can, yes. I can't, you see. You've got a very tiny cut. It's probably only two or three millimetres. Really? Let me just, um, let me just throw this away. We may need to scan your head. Oh, really? CTs. Why is that? Well, the examination is completely normal, which is really good. And um, it's just, as you get older, we, we worry about things. So we worry about things like bleeding in the brain. I don't think it is anything. Can we get a sandwich or something here? Yeah, I can ask one of the nurses to get your sandwich. Don't really? Yeah. Don't you think, will you, what, what a you cheek. Think? This is the NHS. Well, I'd like a sandwich, please, and a G&T. <laughs> if you don't ask, you don't get. No, you don't. Do you want sweeties? Daniel, do you want sweets? Daniel. Six-year-old Daniel has come to A&E with a blister on his foot. He's here with his mum and three siblings. Daniel. Hi. Thank Hi. you. Come free. Got all your bits. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Right, it's fine. Come in, have a seat. So you must be Daniel. So my name's Shalini. I'm one of the A&E consultants. Your mum? Yeah. And who else have you brought with you, Daniel? My sister, my little brother, and my big brother. Wow. So you brought everybody? Except my dad. Except your dad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it'd be quite full if he was here as well, wouldn't it? So what's been... So he got a splinter last weekend from okay. the deck in, and yeah. we got it out. Yeah. But it started to get s very swollen. It's just got bigger. He's not walking on it properly. He won't let you touch it. Can I have a look at your foot? Yeah. Right, then. Do you want to lie down? Yeah, lie or down. It might okay be easier. Then. Do you want to put your other leg up as well? I'm just going to take the sticky off, OK? Do you want to hold my hand? This yellow bit, I think, is a blister with pus in it, and it just needs to come out. So I make a little hole here, and we get rid of all the nasty stuff. Is that OK? So it's not as bad as we thought. You're going to go home with your foot, definitely. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go and get a few more bits, and then we'll come back. It's been 40 minutes since 75-year-old Jerry was admitted to A&E with a dangerously high heart rate. An electric shock 
delivered directly to his heart, has successfully slowed it down. Doctors now need to investigate the underlying causes of his racing heart, so are continuing to do tests. Is it possible to see my wife in a minute? Yep, I'll just get you settled and then we can bring her in, all right? Right, OK. Well. We fixed the problem with his heart at the moment, yes. so we've put that back into the rhythm That's that we're so happy cute. with. I can't believe that you've done that so quickly. <laughs> uh, we needed to, because it wasn't really well enough for us to wait today, so we just got oh, on with it. Because doing it in a and &E is it's obviously a bit more risky than doing it in a nice, controlled way. But it's worked. Thank God I called the ambulance. He was yeah. saying he, he didn't want me to, you know. Mm. But it's a, you did the right thing, so it's a good job you did. So we'll oh, get, thank you. You're very welcome. We'll get you in to see him in a wee bit, OK? Do you want a cup of tea or anything? No, I'm all right. OK, all right. Thank you. We'll come and get You're you You're very shortly. welcome. Oh, all right. Okay. No problem. My first husband had cancer. Initially, it wasn't too bad, you know, and he could get up, but as it got steadily worse, he was bedridden. It just went beyond control. They were giving him blood transfusions. On this particular day, they said, he can't have any more blood transfusions, it's impossible. He said, I'm afraid that that is it. And I said, well, what do you mean? They said, well, about a week. And that, that will be it. The horror of John's death took me a long while to get over. It was so horrendous. I did write a poem. Just one more day. Let, me, let us have just one more day, one more day to talk. One more day to say that we love each other. But he can't. I was 49 when John died. People used to say to me, you're relatively young, you'll meet somebody else. But you say, oh, I don't know whether I will. Come on in. Yes, please do, yeah. It does make you treasure things. Very much so. Pop yourself over there. I was really worried about you. Oh, it's all right. I'm so pleased that I brought you gods in heaven. If I hadn't have got you here tonight, I feel dreadful, really. I think you should have done something about this last weekend when you started feeling ill last Saturday. Let's go. Right. Two hours ago, 92-year-old Margaret came into A&E after falling over and hitting her head. Hello. My name is David. Yes, what are you going to do to me now? A lot of things, plenty of things for you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you don't mind to lie down for me, let's do the ECG. Doctors need to carry out a series of tests to check there is no underlying issue which caused her to fall. Actually, it looks a bit like Dr Frankenstein's experiments. All you need now is the lightning yeah. and everything <laughs> goes up in flames and you rise from the dead, except you're not dead yet. Not quite. The years have gone by very quickly. I think you'll live forever. I was born in 1922. 
I feel now that I'm out of this world. It isn't um, as I knew it. Okay, now we need to be still and quiet. Well, no way. <laughs> It isn't the same, and people go around the street buried in their heads in um, mobile or whatever it is and talking. I often think they're talking to me, but they're not at all. It's changed entirely. Electronics has taken over. So you're not on Facebook? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Margaret's ECG results will be reviewed by doctors to check her heart is beating in the correct rhythm. She will now have a CT scan to rule out any injury or abnormalities in her brain. I had a very happy childhood. We just go for a CT scan. Then so I'll hop around outside. Yes. I was closer to my mother than my father. My father had been badly wounded during the First World War. He had shrapnel and his hand didn't work properly. He couldn't hold a pen. Oh, look at this. Looks very lethal. My mother had to put his boot on every morning and take it off at night. Right, have a lie down there. Great, that's perfect. Looking back, she must have had a difficult life. Sounds a bit like a washing machine in there, OK? Breathe in and hold your breath. Breathe normally. I hope that I won't need somebody to look after me. I can't do certain things now that I could do. I don't run for buses. My great-granddaughter, whom I adore, I'm, I find difficult to lift onto my lap even. I do it, but it's with difficulty. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am scared of losing my independence, very much so. I could have walked this. Seventy-five-year-old Jerry came into recess just over two hours ago with a dangerously high heart rate. How do you feel? <laughs> Doctors suspect it was triggered by a severe infection, which is causing his organs not to function properly. How are you doing, Jerry? It's really hot. Really? It's really uncomfortably hot, yeah. I don't know what we can do about it, really. A specialist cardiology doctor has been called down to investigate. The patient in there is quite unwell. He came in with a pulse of 240, 250. 250? Yeah, yeah. Was it real? Um, yes. So we fixed that with some electricity got cardiology to come and have a look at him because he may have been in and out of this this with me for a week okay. I'm worried he feels clammy he feels like this sounds like septic shock I wonder if it is <laughs> at one end of the spectrum you might have a a, a bit of a urine infection burns a little bit when you have a wee. And at the other end of the spectrum, you'll have that infection, but you'll also have low blood pressures that we can't put right with fluids and high temperatures. And at that extreme end of the spectrum, that's what we would term septic shock. And if that's not treated aggressively and quickly, then that can become life-threatening. You're more breathless. Is he? Yeah and you have a little bit of fluid on your lungs. Um, 
I think we need to weigh up giving you medicine to clear the, the fluid off the lungs, maybe even a mask to help with that. Okay. Six-year-old Daniel came to St George's with a blister on his foot. His mum, brothers and sisters are with him. Doctors have given him gas and air to help with the pain, so they can cut out the infected area. OK, are we ready? <laughs> Shall I clean your foot? I can see a little Not yet. On your lips. No? Should we get you a book to look at as well? Oh, there's some on that yeah. trolley, actually, just over there. I bought them. Why don't you have a read of a book with Amy? Okay. Oh, am I tickling your foot? Is that what it is? There we go. Right then. And all the creatures shiver and shake and crouch in their hollows wide awake. Keep breathing, Dan. Keep doing it. Deep breath in. <laughs> Stay still for me, sweetie. There comes a dream of warmth and food and a place Good boy, to sleep. Good boy, keep breathing. Stop. more steps. Good boy, I think the doctor's all done, isn't she? All the bad stuff. There's a big hole. No, it's all right. That's just the top layer of your skin that's come off. Should we put a bandage on it as well? Should we make it look really dramatic? Yeah. <laughs> Turn your foot round. Thank you. Right. Yeah, that's great. We've got everything. She's lucky. They didn't have to come down. Yeah. Really lucky. Lovely. Now, what Make do it. I owe you? Make it five stars. You, you owe me a hug. How much? <laughs> nothing. You owe me nothing. Really? We well, get this not. for nothing. Oh. Oh, thank you. I one for you on the way. Hug. <laughs> That's very kind. You're thank welcome. you. No problem. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Doctors are waiting for test results to establish whether 92 year old Margaret has an underlying problem which caused her to fall. What stage in your life have you been the most happy? My marriage was very happy. Birth of my daughter was very happy. All of a sudden, life has become rosier. <laughs> I met my husband at the age of 14. I went to school with his sister and I met my husband through her. I used to go to her parties and he sometimes used to pop his head round. And I thought he was gorgeous then. Hello there. Hello. Back again. Back again, I'm afraid. So everything's come back normal so far, which is really good. Um, I've asked this... What am I here for? <laughs> because we're waiting for the scan to be reported by the experts, um, we might take you around to the ward, which is called CDU. Is that OK? <laughs> Margaret is being taken to the clinical decisions unit, whilst doctors wait for the results of her heart examination. Shall I take him? Is this the last? Uh, yes. I was 22 when I got married, and he was 29. I had a white wedding, borrowed the dress, because we were on coupons, and tottered down the aisle. Can I have the, the feet thing, uh, the foot? Which one? The foot thing. Oh, yes. Please. Did you have a happy marriage? Yes, I did. I did, very happy until my husband got Alzheimer's, and that was very difficult. In the end, he got aggressive and didn't know me, put his pants on his head to, to dress himself. Oh, it was terrible, terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. 
you don't have anybody to talk to and you don't have anybody to tell where you've been or to share experiences or to go on holiday with, it changes vastly. But you've got to accept this. In the end, I had to put him in a home, which I didn't like doing, but I had to, because I was losing sleep and I thought, if I'm ill, uh, who's going to look after him? He was in the home for about a year, and I got there just in time before he died, which I was very, very glad about. I just kissed him. He couldn't speak. I just kissed him and called the um, nurses. Bye-bye, and I oh, hope you darling. enjoy your evening, and I hope you my don't miss him. Darling, Thank girl. you. Because her life has been long and not particularly easy, she inspires me. Many, many thanks. You really are a darling. She never, ever says anything like, why me, why did this have to happen to me? She just does what she has to do and carries on with her own life. Dr. Tom now has the results of Margaret's ECG test. With the lady that's going to the CDU with the CT head. Yeah. Um, so she's known to have AF, but it's a bit fast, it's 127. Oh, that's pretty fast. Yeah. It's too fast. Yeah. Doctors are concerned her heart rate is too fast and irregular, and she needs emergency treatment. Has she got any infection anywhere? No. Nothing at all? No. Am I going to be able to go home? No. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Recess. 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 Yeah. Recess. 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 Okay, sweetheart, let's pop up the lights. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Because he can't really see very well. Jerry's abnormally high heart rate is now under control, but doctors have discovered other complications. He has a severe chest infection and fluid on his lungs, putting further strain on his heart. So I think we should try this mask treatment. What is the mask? It's just a mask that forces air down into the lungs. Yeah. And tries to force the fluid in the lungs out. Because if we don't do that, then you can run into some bother. It's not going to be very comfortable, this. No. Unfortunately. Do you want to hold on? OK. Things go by so quickly, and life passes you by so quickly, and you should make the most of everything that you can have. And Jerry and I have both been quite aware of that. Here we go. Flip it. Lift your head forward for me. That's perfect. And rest back. So there we go. Bridge of the nose. We would always go away on holiday. Sometimes we'd have two holidays in the in a year. Well, we did. Sometimes we had three, I think. Clip it in. And then we'll do the bottom ones up at the same time. We said all the time that we're well enough, we're going to do it, because you don't know when you won't be able to do it anymore. And this year was the first year that we, we couldn't go. So here we go. Try and close your eyes and relax. And then okay. let the mask do its work. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
Jerry will be taken to a specialist ward for further tests and treatment so doctors can try to bring his infection under control. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Seven hours after arriving in urgent care, 92-year-old Margaret has been moved to resus for emergency treatment. Doctors are now concerned about her dangerously high heart rate. This is monitoring me, is it? It is, yeah, it's why it keeps beeping. Yes. Your heart's going like the clappers. Is it? I can't think why. I've got some good role models in my family. They've grown old, you know, relatively gracefully. My grandmother on my mother's side lived with us and actually, you know, sort of looked after us when my parents were out at work. So, yeah, she was a big influence on my life. There is a point, certainly, when you see those people you're related to suddenly seem a bit older. And it is a little bit of a realisation that, you know, that happens to everybody. No one's around forever. Does, um, is there anybody you want us to tell that you're here? Well, yes. My, um... Ex-son-in-law, my daughter, um, very unfortunately, died. I had one child, and I'd have liked two, but unfortunately, I didn't have any more. She was very pretty, with curly hair. She was absolutely fine. I mean, naughty, of course, sometimes which child isn't. Hello, Maggie. I'm well, one of the only timing. Has this happened to you before where it's gone far too fast? I really don't know. That's my clothes. I won't get rid of them. <laughs> Can I sit you forward a little bit? Just have a listen to your breathing. When her father was ill, she used to come and see him and take us out. Oh, she was very good, very good. Yeah. You've got a cut on the back yes, of Yes, well, that's why I came in. Because you fell over? Yes. Nice big breaths. Perfect. Perfect. She died of cancer, of the breast which spread all over her. At the time, I thought it should have been me. But it wasn't, unfortunately. What's it for, heart? To slow your heart rate down a little bit, I'm only going to give you a small amount. Right. And then we'll see how that works. OK, I'll see you in uh, 15 minutes. Right. Thank you. It was a great upset. I miss her terribly. Hello, good evening. Hello. Uh, my name's Simon. Oh. I'm one of the other nurses. I've had a selection of them today. You have. <laughs> yeah. They save the best to last. <laughs> <laughs> Your heart rate's come down quite Has nicely, it? yeah. Oh, good. Still a little bit naughty, but we'll keep an eye on it. Good, good. I'm very pleased to hear that. So what we'll do, we'll wait for another 15 minutes or so, um, and then we will be able to take you to the ward. I don't feel lonely. I have a granddaughter, a grandson, a great-granddaughter. Do you think anybody could get me a sandwich? I haven't had anything to eat. If you could. They come and see me, or I go there, mostly once a week. They laugh at my funny ways. So I'm very lucky, very lucky. You know where we're going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there, like, <laughs> a million times. I'm sure you have. Margaret will be admitted to a cardiac ward for constant observation and to ensure her heart rate returns to normal. Nice to hear somebody enjoys their job. Check, 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 everybody. Row, 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 everybody. <laughs> you're safe, man, you're safe. Thank 
you. How do you define something as abstract as friendship? It's sharing. Sharing, I think, is my definition of friendship. It really did frighten me. I was just so worried about him. The very fact that you've got someone who loves you and cares for you, it's like a big comfy blanket round you. And as you get older, you understand that more. This last 12 months or so, I've realised what a comfort that is. So you're not playing Candy Crush, then? Good God. I'm on level 438. Vertical five minutes. If a child comes in with a significant head injury, what I'm worried about is internal bleeding. I cannot remember anything. I could hear him in the background, and he was clearly distressed. His facial bones need CT. His whole side of his face was completely distorted, and he had blood coming out of his nose and his mouth. Thank you.